Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back. In this video, we are looking at the Week 2 NFL Final Look Picks. Uh, we got a great slate Sunday, so I'm looking forward to digging right into the video. Before we get into it, though, I got a couple of housekeeping things to note. If you enjoy the content, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. It just helps this channel reach more viewers. Last week, you guys got the video to over 200 likes, so really appreciate that. Hopefully, help we made some money last week. We were on a bunch of good plays in the Final Look video. Uh, hopefully more to come this week. If you want to join us for this Sunday, you can visit the website dfsprocess.net. Follow me on Twitter if you're looking for some like free betting stuff. I post that every once in a while that I feel good about it. We hit this little plus 500 single game parlay. It was uh, pretty much in the bag except for Washington. The Washington money line, uh, they got saved by the offsides and then the Heineke threw that bad interception. But it was back and forth, but I ended up a holding. So hit that. That was a very good day. So... And the DraftKings lineup put about 120.6. We went with Brown Eye Captain, which was the same build that I showed you guys in the video yesterday. Going Brown Eye Captain just so I could get in all the studs. And all the studs did very well except for Gibson, who uh, just they just went away from him for some reason. He just wasn't that involved on the ground. Even though he's having a ton of success, I don't know why they just went to Heineke to throw him. Like throw the football like 60%, like 65% of the time. But that wasn't great for Gibson. But good day nonetheless. Let's get almost into it. I got to shout out my partners at the game day. Just partnered with them. They are a new sports media company. So check out their YouTube at the game day, their website, gameday.com. If you are in a state that allows sports betting, they give you some uh, good promo codes that you can use to make some, like, to get some bonuses when you sign up on these new sports book sites. You can look for the best um, reviews, look to target some of those sports books, and uh, they just give you some betting tips for some beginners as well. With all that out of the way, let's get into the quarterback plays this Sunday. We got a couple that I really like at the top end. Well, first thing about the slate that I really want to mention is that the mid-range is super strong. Mid-range at quarterback, mid-range at running back, mid-range at wide receiver. It seems like um, kind of a balanced approach for me uh, is what I'm looking at for this Sunday. Still got a couple of guys at the top that I want to mention. It's Russell Wilson at Tennessee just because we saw how bad Tennessee's defense can be. They... Um, they allowed Kyler Murray to do whatever he wanted. They weren't really getting to the quarterback. And Wilson, another guy that can escape the pocket. Uh, if this does turn into a bit of a shootout, then Russell Wilson obviously has the arm to uh, succeed. Even throwing limited passes last week, he still threw four touchdowns. So it always happens with Seattle. They just um, are trying to be a running team, but they end up throwing. Um, and Russell Wilson ends up throwing for multiple touchdowns, even though he throws like 20 under 30 attempts. Josh Allen against Miami, this is a big bounce back spot for him. I haven't seen a lot of people jumping on the Bills this week. The matchup against Miami is not terrible at all. Josh Allen coming off of a disappointing start. I think he's going to step up very nicely. Him and Diggs, I think, make for a great stack in tournaments. We've got a bunch of mid-range at quarterback this week. you got Dak Prescott. That is the game of the week. You want to stack that one up if you are looking for a game to stack. I mean, there's no other one that really can compare. You have uh, two teams with very good offenses. The Cowboys and the Chargers, and both the Chargers defense is decent, but the Cowboys defense is bad, and they also just lost Lawrence, their best pass rusher, for eight weeks or so, so they aren't going to be able to get a Herbert, so Herbert's going to have all day to throw, so both quarterbacks look very good in that game. If you want to be go with Jalen Hurts, I don't mind it. He's still pretty affordable on DraftKings. The matchup against San Fran looks scary on paper, but Hurts is such a good quarterback to roster for fantasy because he can get out there and run, and he runs good, and he runs a lot, uh, can sneak into the end zone for a run. But I'm expecting at least like 50 rushing yards for Hurts almost every single week. And San Fran, we saw them give up some yards late in that game. It was in garbage time, but still, at home, Philly, I think, can compete and keep this a close game. And then Matthew Stafford, if everybody's going to go with Prescott and Herbert, if you want to be different, go with Prescott or go with Stafford. I think he's in a good spot, too. He's super affordable. Pair him with uh, Cooper Cup, Henderson. you got a nice three-man cheap stack. And uh, Indy's defense isn't very good either. They gave up four touchdown passes to Russell Wilson. And uh, Stafford just has such a good offense. You know, something that he was missing in Detroit was very reliable receivers. For mo most of his career, he did have Calvin Johnson. He did have a very good tight end for most of it. But overall, this Rams offense is just super lethal. Has a good offensive line to protect him. Expect uh, Matthew Stafford to have a huge season. Then value plays, if you needed to go to anybody, would be Joe Burrow and Tyrod Taylor. Both guys under 6K, both have pretty decent matchups. Taylor I like just because he gives you some rushing upside, and he's cheap, and he's going up against Cleveland, which he's a big underdog, so they're probably going to have to throw the football a ton. 
Running back plays, also the mid-range is super strong this week, which is going to make guys like Christian McCaffrey, Alvin Kamara become less owned because everybody's going to the 6K range, which is just loaded with like multiple guys that look very good. But McCaffrey's always going to be the best running back to target because um, he's almost on the field for all three downs. He's might end up being the most heavily targeted guy on the team and still get the most carries on the team. Last week, he almost had a 200 combined rushing and receiving yards. He had 28 fantasy points without even getting into the end zone, so that just shows how much upside he presents. Saints defense is solid, but McCaffrey did tear them up a couple years ago, so um, I still like him, obviously. He's matchup proof. Alvin Kamara, if you're going for a little bit of a cheaper stud, he makes some sense. They didn't really have to go to him. I think he sat most of the fourth because they were up by like 30 points, so they didn't have to use him much in the fourth quarter, and they didn't have to... Um, Really throw the football a lot to him either, so that kind of hurt in some PPR sites like uh, DraftKings. The mid-range plays, you have Nick Chubb. He's under $8,000. Big favorite against Houston, which means like ground and pound with Nick Chubb. We've seen him have some huge games last year. They did use Hunt a lot last week, but that's because they had to throw the football a lot in the second half with the Chiefs making their big comeback. So Chubb wasn't, you know, he's not really utilized as a receiver as much as Kareem Hunt, and he did have a pretty costly fumble. Austin Eckler against Dallas. That game is just so good to stack up. Eckler, after some concerns about his status heading into week one with his hamstring, he was ended up doing fine. Only concern was that he didn't have a target, but that's not going to continue. He's just too good of a running back and too good of a pass-catching running back to not get involved in the passing attack. And then this is the value plays. All six, all the 6K range guys. You have Najee Harris, who's getting talked about a ton this week because he played, was on the field for the entire game. Uh, if he's going to be super popular, go to Zeke Elliott against the Chargers. They are going to need Elliott to be involved in this offense. I don't think they can have their defense out there. They don't want to have their defense out there too long. They don't really want to be in a um, you know in a back and forth shootout. I think they want to try to control the game a little bit with Ezekiel Elliott. They don't have Demarcus Lawrence on defense, so they know with um, you know as soon as they give the ball to Herbert, there's a good chance they're going to score. So if they want to control the clock a little bit, Elliott's the perfect guy to just ground and pound with him. He can also catch passes. And he just wasn't utilized very much at all in week one, just with how tough the matchup was. But it is a different story this week against the Chargers. David Montgomery, good matchup for him against the Bengals. He did very well in week one in a tougher spot against the Rams. Broke off a 41-yard run. And until Terry Cohen comes back, it's just solid involvement for Montgomery also in the passing attack. They did use Williams a bit last week, but Montgomery can still catch passes. He's still going to get you about like 20, 25 touches. And then Gerald Henderson was on the field for, I believe, 80-plus percent of the snaps. Uh, they did use Sonny Michelle for about, like, 10%. But Daryl Henderson, he is the uh, the lead back right now in um, Los Angeles. And the matchup is solid here. I like to stack them up a little bit. You can go Stafford, Henderson, Cup, do that three-man stack. Uh, Henderson can catch passes as well if they need him to. But just another cheap running back with some upside. Going over to the wide receiver plays, the top end, you have Hopkins against Minnesota. He's coming off of a two-touchdown performance. I love Stephon Diggs if everybody's just going to go be going to Hopkins. Like, go Stephon Diggs, pair him with Josh Allen. Diggs had a 10-plus targets again week one. That's what you're going to get basically every single week out of Diggs. And uh, I expect him and Allen to probably connect for a touchdown this week. And then Calvin Ridley, tougher spot here against Tampa. They did... Uh, Calvin really did go absolutely bonkers against uh, Tampa's defense last year, and uh, their secondary is really bad. The only problem is that the Atlanta's offensive line is so terrible, and the Tampa Bay Bay's front seven is super lethal. So if they're able to give Matt Ryan some time, it's going to be a big game for Ridley. If he's not able to uh, you know, get the time and he's just continually getting pressured and sacked, then that's going to be trouble. So I do love, love Ridley's just for his upside in tournaments. But there is still a little bit of um, concern just because how bad Atlanta's offensive line looked against Philly. The mid-range is absolutely loaded. Again, at wide receiver, like I mentioned, running back, mid-range is solid. Wide receiver, quarterback. Uh, you got Keenan Allen, 7,000, Amari Cooper, 68. Both guys are playable in the same lineup running back with them. They're going to be the two heavily targeted players on both teams. Allen is looking at 10-plus targets every single week. Cooper is probably looking at like 15 targets without Gallup today, or without Gallup for a while, and with how much they love to throw the football. But I think Deontay Johnson might get a little overlooked. He had like 35% target share week one. We know Ben Roethlisberger really likes to lock in on Deontay Johnson, so it should be another 10-plus target game out of Deontay Johnson if this does turn into a bit of a shootout. That bodes well for Johnson. And 
Uh, I do like his upside just because he's only like the low 6K range, and I haven't seen him talked about too much this week. Some of the value plays, guys that are in the low 6K range, you got CeeDee Lamb. Uh, you can basically jam in Allen, Cooper, Lamb, and Mike Williams all in the same lineup if you want to do a full-on stack. I really have no problem with that. I like Mike Williams too. He's cheap. He had 12 targets in week one. I think he's going to have a big year. Uh, just hopefully he's healthy this year, which has always been uh, something holding him back. But if he's healthy, he should have a big season with Justin Herbert as a quarterback. Herbert and uh, Herbert should lock in on Allen and Williams mostly every week. They had guy in run a couple of routes, but those two are going to be the uh, top two dogs every single week. Cooper Cup. If you're playing Stafford, I love to pair him with Cooper Cup. Even play Cooper Cup by himself. Just uh, a really good option this week against Indy. Matthew Stafford loves to throw the ball downfield, something that Jared Goff really never did. So Cooper Cup's getting those downfield targets. We saw him absolutely tear that defense up uh, and tear, tear the Bears defense up week one. And Antonio Brown, he's also super affordable. Plays pretty uh, great matchup against Atlanta. I mean, Tampa Bay can absolutely run them out of the building. If this game does turn into a blowout, they could um, just run to the, go to the running game late. But I still think Brown is going to have a big game. Tom Brady loves to throw the football. They love to use Tom Brady and just let him sling the ball to these t talented wide receivers. Brown is super cheap. I think he's going to have a big season um, this year. And then you got some values at the bottom if you need to go to them. You have Cedric Wilson, 3,000. Without Gallup, he's going to be the wide receiver three. Tim Patrick, without Jerry Judy, he's going to be in line for a lot more targets. Cole Beasley ran the most routes in the league last week. And then Devontae Smith. Just a guy that's not going to get ownership that much at all this week. But it's a mistake because Smith can get open. He's basically open on whenever he wants. And um, Hurts is going to look up to Smith. I'm expecting at least 8 to 10 targets out of Devontae Smith. Maybe another touchdown, but possibly over 100 yards. Tight end plays. Darren Waller against Pittsburgh. Waller is going to be the best tight end on the slate. He's expensive. So if you want to go a little bit cheaper, you can go George Kittle, who had a down week one compared to Waller. He also lost a fumble, I believe. But Waller's looking at probably 15 targets this week. The mid-range plays, you have Dallas Goddard I like. Uh, Zach Ertz was limited. If he's out, then Goddard looks even better. Tyler Higby, I think he makes sense too. They got rid of Gerald Everett, so it's Higby's time in uh, Los Angeles to shine. He was on the field a bunch, and he ran a bunch of routes as a tight end, so he makes sense. He's pretty affordable as well. And then the value plays, you have Jared Cook against uh, Dallas and Dalton Schultz if you wanted to go to the Dallas tight end. He should get some more targets without Gallup, and he did have six in week one, which is a pretty good sign. And then last but not least, some defenses this week. If you want to go expensive, go can go with the Broncos defense. Trevor Lawrence is going to struggle um, just with the lack of pass protection he has. He's going to throw some picks this year. He threw three in week one. Broncos have a pretty decent defense, so I think they'll be able to force a couple of turnovers, maybe you know, bring one back. The Patriots against the Jets, Zach Wilson also was running for his life in week one. The Patriots can get some pressure to the quarterback. Jets have an also awful, absolutely awful offensive line. Some of the mid-range guys, you have the Saints against Carolina. Saints defense looks scary against Rodgers. They're going up against Teddy Bridgewater. Does have some weapons, obviously McCaffrey, a couple good wide receivers, but I wouldn't mind taking a shot on the Saints. The Steelers against the Raiders, a big win for the Raiders on Monday night, we've had a couple of great month, a couple of great showdown games already this year. It's been insane, but this could be a letdown spot. They're going cross country to uh, Pittsburgh, and you know, Carr did have a very good game. But you know, we've seen Carr also struggle at times. He struggled in the early part of that game. Uh, Steelers have very good defense. They can get some pressure on the quarterback, and then the value defenses. The Eagles are just twenty four hundred dollars. They looked scary against the uh, the Falcons in terms of getting to the quarterback. Uh, Garoppolo is not a guy that can escape the pocket very well. So if they're able to uh, put some pressure on Garoppolo, I think they can get some sacks. Hargraves was amazing for them in the uh, D tackle in the D tackle spot. And then you also have the Jets defense against the Patriots. They are I think twenty two hundred dollars on DraftKings. They are uh, at home against a rookie quarterback and a pretty bad offense. Minus like you know they have a couple of big guys, a big play guys like Aguilar in there. But overall, that def that team is going to struggle to score a bunch of points. Bill Belichick's going to want to go methodical downfield. He's not going to just have Mac Jones just sling it downfield and go super fast. So should be a good spot for some defenses to, or for the Jets defense to uh, kind of manage the pace a little bit. And I think they can have some fantasy points in this week, in this game, and um, at least be a good value at their price tag. 
So that is about it. Oh, I'll also talk about some value stacks here. These are the top three stacks. You know, some of these aren't great values, but Stafford, Henderson, Cup, Higby, great value on all of those guys. Prescott, Elliott, Lamb, and Cooper, all great value plays. And then Herbert, Eckler, Allen, and Mike Williams um, also, if you want to stack that team up. Those are my three favorite teams to stack this week. And that's about it for the video. So thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Best of luck if you enjoy the content. Make sure to hit the like button before you head out. And I'll see you all next time.